Hello students, how are you doing? Today's lesson is going to be extremely interesting. We are going to have a look at the figures of speech in the poem Daffodils. Daffodils is a beautiful poem written by William Wordsworth. Now if you want to know the meaning of the entire poem Daffodils, I have already made a video on it. I will put the link to that video in the description box. You just have to click the link and you will get to know the clear explanation of the entire poem. Ok, now let's concentrate on today's lesson. As I said, today we are going to have a look at the figures of speech in the poem Daffodils. Of course, I am Rashmi from an English nut. Let's get started. I wandered lonely as a cloud. In this very first line of the poem Daffodils, the poet William Wordsworth has compared himself to a cloud. So the figure of speech used here is simile. In simile, a comparison is made between two unlike things using the words like or as. So here the poet has compared himself to a cloud. I wandered lonely as a cloud. So the figure of speech used here is simile. That floats on high o'er vales and hills. The figure of speech used here is alliteration, where a consonant sound is repeated. Hills and high. Okay, in these two words, the consonant sound H is repeated. So the figure of speech used here is alliteration. That floats on high o'er vales and hills. Alliteration. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Now the two words crowd and host are used by the poet William Wordsworth for the daffodils. So the poet has used these two words host and crowd metaphorically. So the figure of speech used here is metaphor. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Metaphor. Okay now let's come to the second stanza of the poem. Continues as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. In these lines, the poet William Wordsworth has compared these beautiful yellow flowers, the daffodils to the stars shining on the Milky Way. So the figure of speech used here is simile. Continues as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. Simile. They stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. They stretched in never-ending line. The daffodils were stretched in a vast area, but surely not never-ending. The poet has used an overstatement over here, never-ending line. So the figure of speech used here is hyperbole. In hyperbole, a statement is exaggerated or over-exaggerated. They stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. So the figure of speech used here is hyperbole. Ten thousand saw I at a glance. Students, do you think the poet has counted the number of daffodils? Of course not. But this is just a way of saying. I'm sure you must have heard a lot of times from your mom. I've told you a hundred times. I've told you a thousand times not to do this. So this is just a way of saying. Similarly, the poet wants to add a poetic effect, which is why he says, 10,000 saw I at a glance. He means to say, he has seen a large number of daffodils. He has seen daffodils in great numbers. 10,000 saw I at a glance. The figure of speech used here is hyperbole. It's an exaggerated statement. Tossing the heads in sprightly dance. Head over here means the top flower part of the plant. Tossing the heads in sprightly dance. The poet personifies the daffodils by saying that the daffodils are tossing the heads, moving their heads and dancing jubilantly. In personification, human characteristics, human qualities are given to non-living things. Tossing the heads in sprightly dance. The figure of speech used here is personification. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. Here the poet personifies the waves as well as the daffodils. The waves are dancing and the daffodils are dancing too. 
the performance of the daffodils is better than that of the waves. As I said, in personification, human qualities are given to non-living things. The waves and daffodils both are dancing. So the figure of speech used here is personification. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. The poet William Wordsworth has attributed human qualities to the daffodils. He loves the cheerful company of the daffodils. So the figure of speech used here is personification. I gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. I gazed and gazed. The word gazed is repeated. So it's obvious the figure of speech used here is repetition. For oft on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood. They flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. The poet says that the sweet memories of the daffodils flash upon the inward eye, that's the imagination of the poet, whenever he is in a sad mood. So the poet says that the memory of daffodils is the bliss of solitude. So the figure of speech used here is metaphor. The last lines of the poem, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. The heart is personified. Heart dances with the daffodils. So the figure of speech used here is personification. And dances with the daffodils. Dances daffodils. So the figure of speech used here is alliteration. The consonant sound D is repeated. So friends, figures of speech give a poetic effect to the language. They embellish the language. I hope you found this lesson useful. To like, share, comment and subscribe. Keep learning, keep practicing. See you soon. Have a nice day.